Happy Sabbath, Church. Happy Sabbath. To begin, I would like to thank um, whoever appointed me for this opportunity. Um, this will help me with um, confidence. I would like to thank my parents. They stayed up late and they woke up early so that I, they could help me work, write this sermon. I would like to thank my sisters um, for staying up my way so that I could focus, and my baby <laughs> sister for not crying when I was writing this. Um, I would like to thank the Sabbath School team and the Children's Choir for building up my confidence for this moment. The platform party, the praise team, everybody who done a special item for carrying out such a beautiful service so far. The Holy Spirit for speaking to me. Amen. During the two weeks of writing this, I had five exams, biology, history, sociology, drama and English. I would advise in the night, I my family to pray for me in the morning before I left for school and I would pray as I start the exam. I praise God because I got 80% in my biology exam. Amen. Today's Bible verse is John 3, 1 to 5. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher, come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered and said, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. When I was younger and I wanted something from my mom, I would commonly stop myself from asking because she will never say yes to that. There's no point in asking. I would rather never ask than be embarrassed by the answer no. It took an older version of myself to realize that it's always worth asking. I mean, if you don't ask, then you don't get. I would tell myself that the worst that can happen is my mom says no. And where's the harm in that? This method gave me many answers that I saw coming and many that surprised me. The title of my sermon today is A Secret Interview with Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you again for giving me this opportunity. I pray that you make clear to the congregation what you have revealed to me in study. I pray that everyone listens and even and everyone gets even the slightest bit from my sermon today. I pray that I touch those who need to be touched. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. The night time is often presented as being secretive. If you had a secret to tell someone, you would probably do it at night, when nobody is awake and no one can see what you're doing. Mysterious. Something about the night time is very taboo. You have a feeling that something more is happening somewhere. Confusing. It's very easy not to know what's going on during this time of night. In the Bible, the night time is described as a time when work isn't efficient. Usual daytime activities such as cooking or cleaning can't be performed in the dark. Without light, we may easily stumble and get off track. In John 3, Nicodemus approaches Jesus in the night time saying, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. If the night time is so unclear, why did Nicodemus choose to meet with Jesus in those circumstances? It has something to do with who Nicodemus was. N.G. White says Nicodemus was rich. He was what is classed as a billionaire today. It was said that he could feed the whole of Jerusalem with his money. A trusted Jewish leader, an honored member of the council. This shows he was high in society and had an intel in many of the decisions made. He was well educated. Education represents power and knowledge. Nicodemus had power, smarts and riches, so he was very important. You couldn't say that Donald Trump is the modern day Nicodemus. He clearly lacks the smarts for that title. You can't, you can't say that Obama is the 21st Nicodemus either. We may, he may be smart, but his wealth doesn't compare to Nicodemus's. Lastly, Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Pharisees believed that they were separated from society and considered others as spiritually unclean. It was a well-known fact that Pharisees would frequently clash with Jesus over his interpretation of the law. You could say that Nicodemus was embarrassed that someone of his wealth and his social standing would be going to Jesus for advice and answers. He chose to meet Jesus in the night time to shadow the encounter. He didn't want the other Pharisees to insult him for what he was doing. It would, e it would be equally fair to argue that he wasn't sure if he would get an answer considering the connotation of being on Pharisees. But reading this, I think, why would anyone be embarrassed to talk to Jesus our saviour? I know, I would jump at the idea of getting to talk with him. Let's see, who was Jesus Christ exactly? Jesus Christ was influential. People would travel far and wide to see Jesus preach. He was a miracle worker. He turned the water into wine. He brought the dead back to life, and he fed the 5,000. He was from Nazareth. Nazareth is what you can call the ghetto. Nazareth was a poor area. You could say 
Nazareth was like Lambeth, which has the highest crime rate in all of London. <laughs> Nicodemus wouldn't have wanted to be seen contradicting the views of the Pharisees by talking to Jesus from the ghetto. Despite the differences between the two, Jesus answered, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. From this answer, we can gather that Jesus was happy to help. Jesus didn't turn Nicodemus away because he was a Pharisee, but welcomed and helped him. This, this may be because Jesus is the sinless Messiah. He came to earth to help to heal you and me. This may also be because Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Pharisees were meant to accompany Jesus with saving souls. They were supposed to be a represent, representation of God on earth. Jesus takes this opportunity to see what Nicodemus can bring to his ministries. Just like a job interview, where the, interview, where the interviewer asks the interviewee questions in order to see if they are suitable for the job. In verse 5, Jesus tells Nicodemus, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. The Bible speaks of being born of the Spirit. This is also referred to as the new birth. This is the work of the Holy Spirit, who helps the believer develop a closer relationship with God. Being born of the Spirit is compulsory, as mankind have been separated from our Father through the process of sin. If we put all of our trust in Christ, salvation can be ours. You are born of the Spirit when you put all of your faith in Jesus. The new birth is an act of God and can only be accomplished by claiming Christ as your Saviour. You can do this publicly through baptism, by handing your life over to Christ, showing you have faith in him and his decisions. Being born of the water is very similar, but described differently. <clears throat> it is explained as meaning for one to cleanse themselves of impurities in order to go to the kingdom of God. Nicodemus learned in his interview with Jesus that to be suitable for the job of working with Jesus, all you need to do is be born of the spirit and be born of water. Jesus wants you alongside him. He just needs you to trust in him and clean yourself of your sins. When I was writing this sermon, I found very much difficulties. I was like, is it too long? Is it too short? Is it going to touch people? But then I thought, as long as it touches me, I'm sure it will touch others. Yeah. I said, if I had a little interview with Jesus, I asked him, what is it that you want me to do? Who is it that you want me to reach? He said, just do enough for yourself, and that should surely be enough for someone else. Come forward if you want to be clean of your mistakes. Come if you want to build a relationship with Jesus and prove to him that you love him. If you need strength in your relationship with the Lord, come forward so that you may be prayed, prayed over. If no one comes forward, that means you surely don't want to be friends with Jesus. You don't want to talk to him. You don't like him. You don't want to, you don't want to be associated with someone from the ghetto. Come forward if you would like to strengthen your relationship. He wants to be born of water. He wants to be born of the spirit. Let me pray of your relationship with Jesus. Let me pray so that you may be cleansed, you may be clean, your impurities may be gone, and you can hand all faith into Jesus. Okay, let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you for people who has touched. Thank you for the words that you've given me, even at the spur of the moment. I pray that this will be a remembered sermon and that I get this opportunity again. I pray that others get this opportunity too so they can see how it is to feel to reach others. I thank you for using me as an instrument for your people and I pray that you do it again. I pray that the people who stood up, who have come forward, will be cleansed from their impurities, that their relationship with you will be stronger and that they will not and they will use their relationship with you as an example and a testimony to people who don't have a relationship with you at all. I pray that you continue to be with us and we continue to love others as you love us. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Jesus is, if you have some
questions. If you have some questions in the corner of your mind, and traces of discouragement and peace you cannot find, reflections of the old past they seem to face every day. There's one thing I know for sure that Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer. I know that you have some mountains that you think you cannot climb. I know you, you think the sun won't shine. In case you don't know, I hear, I'm here to tell you the word of God is true. And everything that he promised, he will do. Jesus is the answer. standing. Um, before the benediction, I'd like on behalf of our church to thank our children today. Yes. That's done very well from Sabbath school today. Yes. What do you say? Yes. Amen. Yes. Every child, we've got talents here. Yes. So parents and guardians, please continue to train them because when we train them, they will not depart from the training. What do you yes. say? Yes. And this afternoon, we're going to have the total members involvement. Jackie, yes?